What is up, my nerds? The Immortal Nerd here, and welcome back to Let's Talk Anime. Uh, <laughs> it's been so long, I forgot how to do my intro. Welcome back to Let's Talk Anime, where we talk about anything and everything that is anime. And for today's episode, first thing I'll be talking about is uh, this thing I saw on uh, Facebook. It's, uh, it was kind of like a poll, and it was uh, the 15 most annoying characters in anime. So that's pretty much like um, any and every anime show that's out there. And um, I'm assuming, since this was a poll, um, they were they were probably like a, a list of characters from different shows and uh, being shown in shoujo and seinen types. So, uh, and I, I haven't even I haven't looked at it yet. I haven't looked at it fully. I just looked at the title and uh, just the premise about it because it gives like a it gives uh, rules that will make certain characters you know the most annoying. And uh, it said that it goes by votes and a, uh, a list of characters that's up there and the ones with the most votes gets, you know, its ranking from the 15. So I'll be surprised this is you guys, depending upon what characters are up there, because um, there is a lot of anime out there. And I know I haven't watched them all because I am a commonly uh, a, a shonen type of uh, guy so it, it's kind of obvious I do have my I won't say uh, shoujo but slice of life type of shows that I watch the only shoujo that I have seen was Sailor Moon that was back in the day and that was because I was I was a young little boy back then I was a shonen back then <laughs> so I was into you know all of it until you know you get older you get more, you know, categorized to what you, you know want, and that led to you know the shonen type of shows. And uh, I also watch uh, seinen type now. So yeah. So any other characters that it shows up here, and I will put the link down in the description below so you guys can see it. And uh, yeah. So some of these I may not know or ever heard of the show from. So we'll see. We'll see what's gonna. So let me see, how do they start it out? Okay, number one, I guess that is the the least annoying, I would assume. But we'll see after number two. Number one, Kibusa on Sailor Moon. Okay. This looks like the one back in the day. Again, like I said, I don't, you know, remember, you know, much about it. You know, they were I only watched it because they were, you know, cute girls in, you know, little fancied up, you know, school uniform. But now the fan service is a whole lot better. That's all I'm gonna say uh, for other shows. So eh, I'm not really too, you know, it's whatever on that. And they give little descriptions here on why each character is, you know, annoying. So moving on to number two. Iris on Pokemon Black and White. Now, I am familiar with Pokemon, but not this one. I stopped after, uh, let me see, Indigo, watched all of that. Uh, uh, was it Pokemon Johto? Yeah, Johto. And I think there was another one. But I think I stopped after Johto. Because after that, it was like, all right, this is getting ridiculous. So, I've seen her character once or twice, you know, early Saturday morning on Cartoon Network when it show up, but I I don't know. So, still, nothing too surprising. Number three, okay. Now we're getting somewhere. Number three is Pan on Dragon Ball GT. Yes, I can agree with that. She will be, she will be up there. She will definitely be up there. And I'm sure some of you guys will totally agree. Number four, 
Mei Ling Li on Card Captor Sakura. I have not heard of that. It's probably a uh, a shoujo type. Haven't heard of her before. Say, let me let me read about her. Eleven year old Mei Ling is another obnoxious kid with a superior attitude. Although she does eventually mature as her series progresses, she is initially portrayed as a huge brat and a loudmouth. She consistently brags about her abilities and lines when various situations don't go her way. In addition, her rivalry against Sakura Kinomoto for uh, Siren Lee affections. Yeah, this is this is probably Sojo or slice slice of slice of life type of show. Affection further exposes her rash and irritating behavior. It's the world's of worst love triangle. Um, kind of reminds me of uh, School of Rumble. That show, I, I I would have to admit, I did enjoy. I liked it. It was funny. It was, it was in the high school setting, and it was it was Japan's. And I'm like, whenever you watch any show that has you know dealing with kids in school, middle school or high school, and it's in Japan, you like if you're in the U.S. anyway, you're like, how come our school is running like that? I would definitely go to school every single day if it was. <laughs> but no, it's not like that. But I can see how she can be kind of annoying. Maybe not as annoying as Pan, but maybe. Moving on, number five. Child Emperor on One Punch Man. Um, I don't know. I haven't he hasn't had enough he hasn't had enough screen time to for me to to determine if he was annoying or not. He may be, but not on a scale of a pan. Yeah, he's just like, he's just, he's a kid. And I guess, I guess uh, most of these lists, they're going to be kids who are, you know, the most annoying. But no, I haven't really, I, re- I haven't really got that feel from him being annoying. Let's see what they say about him. Uh, he may have an odd name for a kid, but ten-year-old child emperor is a child prodigy, ranking as the youngest hero of the Hero Association. Yes. However, he becomes easily aggravated when other refers to him as a child. I mean, who who wouldn't? Even though he is a child, he's not you know going based off of that. He's going off of his intellect. So like, it doesn't matter how old you are, if you you know if you're smart, you know, give him some respect on that. Put some respect on his name. Child Emperor, <laughs> which is kind of funny. He, he don't want to be called a child, but that's his hero name, Child Emperor. Anyway, as a first time I'm a child, you know that thing he objectively is, you know, which I just got finished stating. He displays his superiority by acting as if he's better than everyone else. I won't say that's annoying. That's more so arrogance, including the dotes. He's the quintessential... He's the quintessential annoying know-it-all character. And like I said, I wouldn't say he's annoying just yet. Know-it-all, yes. Arrogant, yeah. But annoying, I wouldn't say so much. Maybe when season two comes out, whenever that may be, we'll see more screen time on him, and he, I may get that feel then. But as of right now, no. Moving on, number six. Maria, let me pronounce this right. Maria Ushiromiya on Umineko when they cry. Never heard of that before. Uh, let me see. And now we have pictures up so you can see who these characters are. So you guys may know who it is and the the anime that it's referring to. So uh, I don't know who she is. So uh, yeah, I'll move that on. Number seven. Hito Shoma on Fruit Basket. Now that is a show that I have, you know, heard of quite often. Never got the chance to look at it. I think that is another slice of life type. Uh, let me see. Uh, let me read something about him. Hito is no ordinary two-year-old middle schooler. He possesses the ability to change into one of the animals from the Chinese zodiac. Hmm, this is, this is interesting. Also, he's kind of a 
the word, I'm not going to say it. Most of the time, he's mischievous, sarcastic, and hardly ever smiles. He sounds like me. <laughs> he spends a lot of time being overprotective of his crush, Kisa, and throwing shade on Todu's Hono's ability and personality, making him a nettlesome presence. In fact, he, in fact, even after he starts to take a liking to Todu, he continues to act like a brat with her. Kids are the worst. I mean, you got uh, this is this is you know normal preteen and child behavior. I mean, I don't see how that's annoying yet. I would have to watch the show. This made me you know put this on the list. I have to watch it. All right, moving on. Number eight, Pop Harukaze. And what is from on Hojomaju Dorimi. Doremi, maybe. Uh, I don't know. It looks kind of cute. He or she, whoever this may be. Uh, I don't know. Let's see. Pop is a cute pink haired munchkin who is very smart and acts relatively mature. Despite her, sorry, so it is a she, despite her age. She's jealous of her older sister, Doremi, who's allowed more freedom and attention than her. It makes sense. Doremi's lazy and immature nature infuriates Pop, making her a what? Making her a stern and grouchy kid. She's constantly scolding, criticizing, and squabbling with Doremi, which gets annoying super fast. No one wants to deal with a nagging child. Mm. Uh, I don't know what to say about that. If you're saying that about your own child, what does that say about you? I don't know. Moving on, number nine. Sarah McDowell on Love, uh, on Love Hina. Oh, she kind of looks like, uh, what's the girl's name? Uh, Winry. Was it Winry? I think it's Winry. It's Winry on Full Metal Alchemist. Uh, she is one of the most bratty and annoying kids that live to cause trouble for the protagonist. She's a nine-year-old tomboy who's considered an obnoxious two-faced brat for the other characters in the series. She may act innocent at times, but she quickly switches to a devilish attitude. Her hobbies include pestering Kitaro Urashima and spending her time lying and pulling childish pranks, you know, like a future psychopath. Uh, I don't know. I may put that on the list. We'll see. Number 10. Uh, Toma Kalana Ju on Girls Bravo. Huh. So I'm, I'm noticing that it's more girls here that are annoying than the boys. So what does that say about girls maturing a lot faster than boys? <laughs> well, in the anime world, you can do that. But in reality, we all know females do mature you know, a lot faster than boys do, so, yeah, so let's see, uh, Tomoka is a 10-year-old half-pint who is talented when it comes to transformation magic, okay, you're dealing with some magic in here, despite her innocent face, she is super annoying, but Tomoka being recognized as a mature person is a mark of pride, because of this, whenever people, people treat her like a child, she is quick to anger, not a response with this nod comment or a challenge. As the American president knows, so this take place in America, okay? As the American president knows, that's how you prove that you're a real grown up in the room. In addition, she refers to herself in the third person, which is something that only the worst people in the world do. But I mean, um, I've heard that if you talk to yourself in third person or refer to yourself in third person, you're able to, you know, get stuff done or you, you build uh, confidence within yourself. So uh, that's kind of a good thing. So people who, who are not that, you know, refer to yourself in the third person. It will change something about you. All right. Number 11, Chirose Sakuraba on Chirose Get You. Another girl. Uh, yeah. So the only one that I've really known is Pan. She's the only one. Number 12, Arumi Asahina on Magical Shopping Arcade, Abinobashi. 
There's another one. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's see. Let me read something about her. Aromi is a 12-year-old brown-haired girl that is transported on a magical adventure with her childhood friend, Satoshi Iromiya. Although she is more sensible of the two, she has a tendency to be overbearing, to be overbearing, bossy, and quick to anger. Honestly, it just comes across as obnoxious. In addition, she is consistently hitting people and screaming at everyone, especially Satoshi, making her even physically abusive in addition to bothersome. I want, from this description, I would say she's annoying. She's just, she's abusive. That's it. She's just abusive. I don't know who would want to be her friend like that. Number 13. Oh, no. Shippo from Inuyasha. Come on. Shippo? Really? And this is kind of funny because I was just watching some of the uh, the Inuyasha's movies on Netflix. And and even, you know, during the, the series, the first and second season, I like Shippo. Shippo, he was... Between between him and Jockin, they were like the most, you know, the funniest characters in the show. How can you, how can Shippo be annoying? Come on now. Let me see. Shippo is a young Kitsuna child who can shapeshift into other forms temporarily. The only shape he can't master is someone who doesn't suck. Although he isn't exactly a normal child, he still exhibits the juvenile characteristics seen in most kids. While he is a cute character, his lack of helpfulness starts to become swiftly annoying. Most times he is very whiny, whiny and in need of constant protection since he's almost always scared and crying. In general, he talks a big game but can hardly ever deliver. When he's not being an annoying, an annoying baby, he's often playing tricks on Inuyasha and pestering him. Overall, Shippo is worrisome to watch. Uh, I mean, come on now. He he tries. At least he tries. He's not like uh, Mioga, the flea that always you know run at the first sniff of danger. He at least you know he at least tries. You know yeah he say he's scared but and have no doubt that he can you know win some of the battles that he's in. But he tries to steal anyway. I mean that that's what I like about Shippo. He got the guts. He got the guts. But come on now. And him playing tricks on Inuyasha, because Inuyasha doesn't like him. He always being mean to him, so yeah, he's gonna be mean to him back. Uh, I can hate on Shippo like that. I wouldn't have Shippo on the list. I wouldn't have him on the list. All right, let's go on. Number fourteen, Naru, Naru Kuroishi from Barakaman. Or Barakamon. Let's see. Uh, don't really know who this is. Naru, seven-year-old girl who is adventurous, cheerful, and kind-hearted. She's also wildly irritating. She has bad habit and a hyperactive attitude that often get her into trouble. This can be very irksome, especially for Sheishu Honda, the adult protagonist of Barakamon. Although Naru is definitely not a kid you want to babysit, she's actually a relatively tolerable character. Or at least she advances plot line from time to time. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Alright. Moving on to the last but not least most annoying character on this list is... May Chang on Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Yes, I remember her. And from what I remember, for the last time I watched the show was maybe two, two and a half years ago, I want to say. And from what I can remember, like I said, I didn't find her annoying. To be honest, she was... She came with business. I mean, she 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 knew what she needed to do. Uh, let me see. May is a ten-year-old royal princess, a skilled martial artist, 
and an alchemy history, basically Zengji's alchemy master. I think I pronounced that right. Correct me if I'm wrong down there in the comments. Even though she is a sweet girl, she's also a know-it-all. So a mixture of uh, child emperor. I mean, which kind of kind of makes she's a she's a royal princess. They kind of back then they kind of had to you know know pretty much everything that needed to be known about not only their country but you know everything around them because they were soon to be you know ruled by them one day. So they had they kind of had to know everything. But anyway, that's a terrible quality for any child to have. In addition, she has the pros the, the prop propping city, uh, never seen that word before, to get herself into trouble due to her aggressive attitude. It's really no fun to watch her constantly get her butt saved, then be kind of snotty about it. I mean, like I said, she she isn't afraid of any danger. She, 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 she could bring the business, but uh, yeah, I mean, but like I said, the majority of these characters, I do not know. I only knew three exactly out of the 15. So maybe maybe you guys knew more than I did. And if you did, put down in the comments, who did you know? And if you agree with this uh, with this list, and if you don't, put in put in the order of which you think these characters here that I just shown is the most annoying. One being the least annoying. Well, no, 15 being the least annoying and one being the most annoying. And I would I would love to see those uh, results from you guys. And uh yeah, that's going to be that's going to be the end of this video, the 15 most annoying characters ever. Now, I can I won't say I won't really say that, but one of them I can totally agree with, and it's Pan. But all the others, like I said, never ever seen the anime form. And the ones that I have seen that I knew from the other two, I I can't say that they're annoying. Um, so yeah, uh, that's what it is. If you guys uh like this video, you know what to do. Like it up, and um, uh, I will. I will have another video coming soon, and it's going to be yeah. <laughs> That's all I can say for it. It will, it will blow your mind because it did for me. Basically, what I'm gonna do for that video is just uh, reiterate some of the things that I saw from a, a previous video that I have watched earlier today. Um, I would I would give this person credit because they came up with this. All I'm doing is just reiterating and you know maybe summarizing or paraphrasing or and adding on to some of the things that they may have left out on it. So uh yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video once again. You know, thank you guys for coming back. I know I've been gone for a long time with my Let's Talk anime videos. I know I've been doing, you know, uh, gameplays. And I still have more uh, uh, the Ultimate Alliance going on, you know, for Marvel, and um, I'm still on that, you know, that that Ultimate Zone trying to beat it. Very frustrating, but you know, I put it off to the side because you know I need it. You know, I need it to you know refresh, recuperate from that. But anyway, like I said, my other video that will be coming after this one. Stay tuned for it. You know, make sure you got your 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 push notifications on for it because when it's uploaded, you want to stay tuned. Because, like I said, if this was planned from you know since day one, then oh my gosh, oh my gosh. But anyway, thanks again, you guys. Please like, share, subscribe. Get this out there to all the nerds in the universe, multiverse, and alternate dimensions. And I will see you in the next one. The Immortal Nerd.
signing off.